in this video, we're going to look at a couple more examples of how to solve radical equations. And so in this third example, we have 3 plus the square root of 4n minus 5 equals 10. And so remember, when dealing with solving radical equations, first thing we want to do is always isolate the radical. We can't get to anything inside the radical until this is isolated and we remove it. So if I take a look, that means I'm going to have to get rid of this positive 3. And so I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. And that's going to give me the square root of 4n minus 5 equals 7. Now that the square root is completely isolated, I can remove it by performing the inverse operation, which is squaring. And so if I square both sides to keep the equation balanced, I'll be left with whatever's in my radical, which is 4n minus 5 equals, and 7 squared is 49. I would add 5 to get 4n equals 54, and then divide by 4. And when you divide by 4, 54 fourths can be simplified into 27 halves. And so right now, this is what I think my answer is, but we always have to check it. So off to the side, I'm going to check my answer. I have 3 plus the square root of 4 times 27 halves minus 5, which should be equal to 10. So simplify, I get 3 plus the square root 4 times 27 halves is 54, so you get 54 minus 5, which 54 minus 5 is 49. The square root of 49 is 7, so 3 plus 7 equals 10, which is true. 10 does, does equal 10, and so I know for sure this n equals 27 halves is an answer to the radical equation. So I isolated my radical by undoing the addition around it. And then once the radical is isolated, I do the opposite operation, which is squaring both sides, and then solve like a basic two-step equation. Let's look at example four. Here, it does look a little complicated. I have the square root of x plus 12 equals the square root of 2x plus 8. Well, now my variables are on separate sides. However, both sides are in a radical. There's nothing else here. There's no minus or plus over here. There's no coefficient. There's no minus or plus over here outside the radical. Like the radicals are both isolated on separate sides. And so when this happens, if it's a radical completely isolated is equal to another radical completely isolated, what you can do is you can square both sides right away. And that will cancel out the radicals. So I get the statement x plus 12 equals 2x plus 8. And so what would I do? I would subtract x. So 12 equals x plus 8. And then subtract the 8 to get x equals 4. And again, I want to check my answer. I want to plug in 4 and just make sure it's true. And so I have the square root of x plus 12. So the square root of 4 plus 12 should be equal to twice the square root of 4 plus 8. So the square root of 4 plus 12 is 16. 2 and 4 is 8 plus 8 is 16. So the square root of 16 equals square root of 16. Yeah, you know, 4 does equal 4. And so x equals 4 is a satisfactory answer. And so in this example, we learned that if the radicals are completely isolated, if you have two of them, and they're isolated on separate sides, there's nothing else attached to it on the outside. You can square both sides right away to solve the equation. Move on to the next videos to look at a couple more complicated examples.